I need Petri dishes. Mushroom season is almost here in Pennsylvania. I got about two weeks before they really start coming out. So I want to be kind of prepared. I'm going to make 20, yeah, there's 20 of them in here. 20 of these three compartment Petri dishes. And the grow medium that I'm going to be putting into those Petri dishes, it will be agar based. So here I just have some nutrient agar. I have some potato starch to add to the agar for the mushrooms themselves since they need some more nutrients other than nutrient agar. Light malt extract powder and yeast extract powder. Now I did make a video on how to make Petri dishes about eh, two years ago. And in this video, instead of using the boil the crap out of it method to sterilize the agar, I'm just going to be using an instant pot. These are very handy to have. I very highly recommend getting one of these if you can find one for cheap. Uh, the first thing that I need to do is, since I am using these two bottles to put into the Instant Pot, which is you know, just a pressure cooker, self-contained pressure cooker, I need to mix up 400 milliliters of the agar solution. So let me put these off to the side, measure out 400 milliliters of distilled water. You could use tap water for this, but honestly, I do like to use distilled water if possible. I know I said I wasn't going to use the boil the crap out of it method for these. But I am going to bring everything up to a boil before I put it in the Instant Pot. Just because I've noticed if you don't at least bring things up to a, a decent temperature before you put them in a pressure cooker. Uh, the powder, the powdered agar kind of stays at the bottom of whatever it is that you're preparing. And you get very inconsistent viscosities whenever you're pouring your agar into your dishes. Like the stuff on the bottom of the bottle will be a little more viscous and thicker than the stuff on the top of the bottle just because the agar powder is kind of settled to the bottom. And... So if we first boil this, even for a couple minutes, before we pour them into the bottles to be pressure cooked, then that makes a huge, huge, huge amount of difference. Now that that's stirring, I'm going to get my electronic scale and let me move my camera down. I'm going to weigh out my agar powder. So if we're dealing with 23 grams per one liter, then uh, 2.3 grams per 100 milliliter, 0.23 grams per 10 milliliters, so 0 0.023 grams per milliliter, we're going to go with 400 milliliters of water. So where's my calculator? Just so I know. I'm actually going to round that up to 0 0.25, well, 0 0.025 grams per one milliliter, so 400 milliliters times 0 0.025 should give me, what, 10 grams? Yeah, 10 grams of the agar powder needed. Uh, that will also ensure that the mixture, that well, that will also ensure that the agar that will be present in the Petri dishes is a little thicker, and once it sets up, it'll be a little harder, and it'll be a little easier to actually, like, do transfers and stuff by uh, cutting out chunks of it and stuff. All right, so let me turn this on. And my battery's dead. Hold on. There, new battery's installed. Tear that out. Okay. Now I'm just going to weigh out 10 grams of this. I'll speed this part up so it doesn't take up a lot of time. There we go. 10... 0 0.00 grams according to this little scale. I will take that any day of the week. Now as far as the amount of ex malt extract powder that you want to add for any like you know like mushroom agar that you're preparing, I just like to add a one-to-one -one ratio. Since we added 10 grams of the agar, I'll be adding 10 grams of the malt extract powder. Eh, good enough. 10.1 grams isn't going to hurt anything. Technically, if you wanted to, you could stop here. That should be 
more than enough for uh, your little mushroom buddies to grow on. But as I stated earlier, I'm going to add just a little, little more nutrients in the means of some yeast extract. And this is just going to be kind of an arbitrary amount. I'm just putting one gram of the yeast extract in. Tear that out. And once again, this is going to be kind of arbitrary, but I'm going to add two grams of the potato starch to supplement the malt extract and the yeast powder. Yeah, 2.18 grams. We'll go with that. That's fine. As you can see, you don't have to be entirely precise with your measurements whenever it's whenever you're uh, talking about the nutrient additives. I'm not going to add carbon to these. I'm just going to let this kind of live its best life as see-through agar in case I want to clone some uh, wild mushrooms and I'd like to gauge the growth as closely as I can. Next thing to do is now since everything is added in here and weighed out. I'm just going to mix the powders together a little bit in this cup. Like so, just so that it's a little homogenous. I mean, it's it's never going to mix perfectly. This step isn't really required, but it's just something I do that I like to do anyway. All right. And then add the powder into the water. Now I have stirring turned up pretty good. Water's already getting warm, so hot plate's doing its job. Just let it do its thing until it comes to a boil. See you then. There we go. That's pretty good. Solution looks pretty decent. See, it's already pretty. It's already pretty thick. So now, the next step is to pour this into these bottles. Hopefully, the, they, these bottles claim to be borosilicate glass, so we're going to test that right now. Alright, so far that one's pretty good. That was actually another kind of test I wanted to do with these bottles is just see if they can withstand temperatures like this, like a temperature differential, and what do you know? They did. Put the lids, you don't have to put the lids super tight on these, just until it starts like actually like cinching down, and then I just like to loosen it just a little tiny bit. start. That's all there is to it. Let it go until the timer goes off and let it cool down for about 10 minutes. Vent, pour in the petri dishes, which is what we'll do whenever this is done. I'm going to go finish watching Reservoir Dogs while this does its thing. The Instant Pot has gone through its sterilization cycle. I'm just going to let this cool down for about, for about 10 minutes before I open up the vent on the back here, because if you open up this vent, yeah, it'll like release the pressure really quickly and you'll be able to open it sooner. The agar solution inside this container will be higher than the boiling point of water, which is fine if it's, con if it's uh, contained in the sealed vessel, but once you release that pressure, the temperature of the agar solution itself is going to be higher than the boiling point of water, which means that it's gonna start boiling quite profusely which isn't that big of a deal for like regular water, but this is a really viscous agar solution that will create a lot of bubbles and that will make your agar solution bubble out of the container and all throughout your, you know, your instant pot and you'll just lose, you know, your agar, which is never a good thing. So let this cool down for about 10 minutes thereabouts 
then we can open up this valve. That'll release any remaining pressure, if it hasn't already released the pressure. Open it up and pour the agar into these Petri dishes. So I'm just going to set my camera, which is actually my phone, right here. And whenever the agar is cooled down and ready to go, putting all of the agar into these Petri dishes here. So, more reservoir dogs. Let's go over here to the instant pot. Yep, good. Internal pressure has been released. Looks good. All right. Good, 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 good. I'm going to take these Petri dishes out of their sterile sleeve. Let me sanitize my hands. Okay. And I'm going to make four stacks of five Petri dishes each. Boy, I am rusty. I haven't done this for a while. <laughs> Ow. The mask is on to my eyeball. I'm actually going to take this other one out too, just so that it's cooled down a little bit by the time I'm ready to do this. Okay. Hand sanitize one more time just because I'm OCD. And whenever you're doing, like filling your Petri dishes, this is the most critical part. Obviously, you want your containers, if you're using Petri dishes, to be sterile. If you're using like Tupperware, you want that to be as clean as humanly possible that you can get it with chemicals and you know, like bleach or something like that. Whenever you're filling these up, make sure that you don't have any like fans running. You want the air to be as still as possible. Now pouring the agar, still relatively hot like it is here. You will have a little bit of leeway as far as uh, you know contaminations go, but you still want to be as clean as you can possibly be. I'll just tell you what I'm going to do real quick so that I can just do it. Take the top off of this. As soon as the top is off of this bottle, take the Petri dishes, lift the whole stack up, except take the top off the very bottom one, lift the whole stack up with that one, pour into the three compartments, and then place the top back on, just repeat until that whole stack is filled, and then move to the next stack. Simple enough, right? Whoa, that's hot. Okay. Yeah, I figured I'd have to. That's why I got this piece of paper towel here. Yeah. We'll do this so that I don't burn my hand. There's not enough to fill another one. It looks like I didn't make quite enough for all these, but that's fine. Because as long as you don't open up your Petri dishes, you can put them away and reuse them again for uh, another uh, batch of agar, as long as you don't open up the tops. And they stay sterile pretty good that way. So 400 milliliters was enough for about 15 of these guys. They're poured, and I am going to do one more thing to ensure that if there is any contaminations in there, it's killed, like all the bacteria or whatever that may have gotten in here are killed off. Hopefully the heat from this hot agar, because that agar was really hot, hopefully the heat alone will pasteurize and kill anything that's in there. But I'll show you one more thing that I do. This is way overkill. You this, you know, this is way out of uh, the scope of, you know, like simple DIY petri dishes. This is just something that you do if you already have the equipment to do this. But let me let me quit talking about it. Just do it. The last thing I'm going to do is put them in this old mini fridge. 
that I've converted into an incubator. I have the temperature set for 70 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to let them set up in here overnight at 70 degrees. It'll take a, I just turned this on maybe about five minutes ago, so it's going to take a little while for the temperature to stabilize. But I'm going to let them set up in here overnight at 70 degrees so that the agar has a chance to kind of absorb any moisture into the solution itself like that may be coming off currently a steam you see how how condensated those lids are i don't want that to drip down onto the agar whenever i go to use these and another thing that i did with this little incubator at you know my homemade incubator is where is it at you see back there near the heating element there's that little white ball in the back that's actually an air bubbler let me shut this and the air bubbler is connected to my ozone generator let me turn this up to 30 minutes because i think that's the maximum pump in ozone into this incubator here so i guess technically now it's an ozone chamber i guess you could call it uh, the ozone's going to permeate throughout the chamber, permeate into the petri dishes, and hopefully destroy any bacteria, mold, spores, yeast, anything that may be considered a source of contaminations in that agar. And once this sits overnight, lets all the ozone kind of go away, it'll eventually kind of diffuse out of the incubator itself. It's not perfectly sealed up. It'll diffuse out of the agar, and hopefully we'll have completely sterile agar ready to go for this mushroom season. They are completely solidified. Uh, before I end this video, there is one thing that I want to address, and that is if you're going to do a hot pour, like a hot agar pour like I did in these, once in a while with these uh, polystyrene petri dishes, they will tend to stick to one another, just very, very slightly in the middle. And if that happens, all you got to do, just wedge your fingernail in between, let me do this, wedge your fingernail in between these two, you know, the, the two that are sticking together, and just very, very, very gently apply some upwards pressure, if I can, can't get my fingernail underneath this one, which is kind of weird because I have fingernails for once. Almost. There we go. And they'll usually just kind of let go. But yeah, we got some pretty decent... Oh, here's These ones are stuck together too, which is fine. Like I said, it's just kind of the nature of the beast with these hot agar pores. Just some very gentle persuading will usually free them without any issue. You can see right here, right here, this mark was where they were just kind of sticking, but that's not that's not a big deal really. Ah, okay. I thought there was a contamination on this one, but it's where they're sticking on the bottom one too. <laughs> okay, and the same thing there. And you can see, kind of sticking, it was kind of sticking right there. Please excuse my dirty fingernails, I was just at work, and I haven't had a chance to, like, clean my fingernails or anything. But, yeah, got a nice agar pour, agar looks good, nice and solid, ready for inoculation. Hopefully that video was a little bit uh, easier to watch than my other video for some people. Alrighty, mushroom season. Come on, mushroom season. I can't wait. Oh, look at all the scratches on my hand from my new kitten. She's evil, but she's really cute. But she's evil. Oh, and one last thing that I forgot to mention before I finally conclude this video. If you are not going to use these within like a week, I highly recommend wrapping them in like, I like press and seal wrap, but you can use like cling film or aluminum foil or even just like put them in a big bag. Uh, that way, you know, they don't dry out uh, because especially 
petri dishes like these ones they have uh they're they're vented so they have a little bit of air airflow just you know so for some fresh air exchange and the agar will start drying out after a, a few weeks it'll start coming like more and more dehydrated uh so i'm going to wrap these in some press and seal come back and then i promise the video will be over there we go the nice thing about this is not only will this prevent them from you know, losing their moisture in the agar. Eh, they also, if they happen to maybe get knocked over during storage, uh, they won't, you know, go flying everywhere. They'll still be together and be safe and sound. Awesome. Well, I guess that concludes this video. I uh, will see you next time, guys.